I'm Zach, I'm 34 years old, and I have a problem. I became a maker at an early age. At first it started off innocent, I built things with blocks and with Legos. But as I got older, I started getting into more illicit activities like building rockets and working with electronics. At my lowest point, my dad even taught me how to use a welder. As I got older, the problem became worse because I got a job and I started earning money. All of a sudden, I could afford things like buying tools and more parts for more projects. The problem got worse and worse. Over time, my hobbies and interests as a maker have led me to accumulate a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know if you can relate to this. Maybe you have a hobby that requires lots of different materials or components or parts or tools, and it just takes up a lot of space. It's time to crack down on this problem. I am going to get organized once and for all. Here on Bite Size Engineering, I make ridiculous project videos that help you unleash your inner maker. But also, I clean up after myself every once in a while. These projects that I do on this channel are really fun, but it also means that my office and my garage are super cluttered with lots of different things. And in this video, I'm going to tackle that problem and show you my process of cleaning up and organizing my stuff. If you have the same problem like me, hopefully by the end of this video, I'll give you some tips or ideas or maybe some action items you can take to get your stuff organized. I'm not gonna talk too much about the philosophy here, but I think that the foundation for being organized really relies on having a place for everything. At the end of the day or at the end of your project, everything needs to be cleaned up and put back in its own space. I'm dividing my stuff into three categories. Tools, stuff that needs to be accessed regularly, and stuff that doesn't need to be accessed regularly. To organize and store all of my tools, I'm just going with a simple toolbox. Now I understand that these can be pricey, so I recommend checking out like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist to see if you can find one used. In my case, I searched for weeks and weeks and couldn't find anything that would fit my needs, so I ended up just buying one new. Up until this point, I've been carrying most of my tools inside this tool bag and it's just a giant mess in here. I ended up getting hurt most of the time sticking my hand in here because there's a lot of sharp objects. So that's all about to change. I'm gonna take everything from this bag and put it here in the toolbox. I'm trying to use the philosophy of like first order retrievability. I want the things that I use the most to be the easiest to grab. So this top drawer is really dedicated to things that I use the most. From there, I just kind of organize things based on their utility or their function. So I have like wrenches and driver sets in one drawer. I have drill bits in another. I have screwdrivers and Allen wrenches in another drawer. So this is how I've kind of organized this. Before we get too far into this project, I want to tell you about the sponsor of this video, and that's Altium. If you're like me, you're constantly working on projects that involve electronics. Maybe you're making an Arduino project, or maybe a Raspberry Pi project, or some sort of IoT thing, or maybe you're making a robot. You're going to need a circuit board for that project. And in order to design that PCB, you're going to want to use a reliable PCB design software. And that's why I'm recommending Altium Designer. What I like about Altium Designer is that it's an all-in-one platform. That means that you don't have to open up separate programs to do your schematic capture or your component selection or your board layout and your netlist generation. It's all in one platform. If you want to get serious about making PCBs, there's a link in the description where you can get a free trial of Altium Designer. When you download that free trial of Altium, you're also going to discover one of the other features that I like, and that's Altium 365. Altium 365 is a cloud workspace that allows you to save your project files in the cloud. Cloud. That means that you can collaborate with other people, you could work on various machines without losing your work. A whole team of engineers can be collaborating and reviewing the same project because it's cloud-based. So here's what you need to do. Go down in the description and click on the link and that will give you a free trial to Altium Designer. You're going to install it and open it up and start playing around with it and start placing components and then routing your traces and you're going to see how easy it is to use. After you're done playing around with the trial, you're going to go back in the description and click on the second link, which will give you a 30% discount when you decide to buy a license. Thank you for supporting sponsors like Altium, and thank you to Altium for supporting my channel. Now that I have those tools put away and organized, it's time to move on to those things that I need to access really easily. For those things, I'm going to be using these colored bins on the wall. I've had these for several years and they work great. If you've been around the channel for a while, you'll definitely have seen them in the background of most of my videos. If you're interested in getting some of these, I'll put an Amazon link down in the description. This is a really nice solution because you can actually take these bins off the wall and bring them on location and work wherever you need them. And then when you're done, you can just put them back. That third category are things that you don't really need to access that often. 
For those kind of things, I use these clear storage bins. These are really inexpensive. You can get them at Walmart or Home Depot, and they're usually like less than a dollar a piece. I don't like getting storage bins that are much bigger than this, and there are a couple reasons for that. With bigger storage bins, you end up throwing a whole bunch of things in there, and it gets really heavy, and then it's hard to find things because there's so many things in there. By keeping them relatively small, you limit the number of things that you can fit in each bin, so it makes it easier to find the thing you're looking for. Of course, I don't rely just on the fact that these are clear to know what's inside. I have a label maker that I use to label every single bin as well as every single bin on the wall so that everything has a place and when I go to put it back I know exactly where to put it. This system of clear bins has worked so well for me that I've ended up with almost 40 of these things. These bins can stack on one another but right now I have them stacked four high and that presents a problem. If I need something in that bottom bin obviously I have to pull out all four bins to grab that so I'm going to solve this problem by creating a shelf that only fits one bin per layer. The root cause of being unorganized really kind of boils down to one thing. If your tools or your materials or your components don't have a place to go, they'll just constantly be floating around from place to place.
My goal with this video and my channel as a whole is to help you unleash your inner maker and part of doing that is making sure that your space is organized so that you don't waste too much time. I'm sure you're familiar with that feeling of looking for something for hours and hours only to not be able to find it because your workspace is such a mess. The reason that working in a chaotic environment poses such a problem is that you waste so much of your time looking for a part or a tool instead of completing the task or the project. Here's a little bonus project that I'm really excited to share with you in a future video. I have a lot of wire spools that I use in my projects as well as a lot of 3D printing spools and those are always a mess. They're always hard to store and to be able to access. So I've got a really cool project that I've been working on. When you click on this video here, you'll see what I'm talking about and how I tackled this problem.